am Donna Wolf from Nastasia.com. Today, I'll show you some tips for sewing with crochet. You are probably familiar with the metal bent nose needle and blunt tip needles for sewing. But I would like to show you this Knitter's Pride yarn needle that has a piece of fishing wire at the end. Makes it easy to thread the needle with yarn. And then this Susan Bates flexible yarn needle opens up in the center so you can easily insert the yarn. Let's start off with talking about crocheting in the round. Most of the time we're told to slip stitch to the initial chain to finish it off. The problem is that creates this triangular bump looking thing at that point. To eliminate that, I'll show you a trick. Remove that slip stitch so you are at your last double crochet. And then just cut the yarn and pull it through. Thread a yarn needle. And then with the needle, go under the both loops of the top chain. And then insert the needle through the back loop and back bump of that top of the previous double crochet. Now your circle is nice and smooth. When weaving in ends, whether with a circle or with a rectangle, I like to use a thinner blunt needle. Turn the piece over and begin taking small stitches to weave in the ends. And try to pierce the yarn when you do this. Don't just go underneath all of the stitches. Try to go in between the twists of the yarn. This creates additional friction and helps prevent the ends from coming undone. Pierce and pierce the yarn and pull through. Cut the yarn and you are done. When sewing two pieces of crochet together along their nice top edge, I like to leave a good 18 inch strand before I finish off the crocheting. This will be used for sewing. I place my work flat so I don't get any bumpy seams. I like to use a version of the mattress stitch to stitch the pieces together. First, I'll show how to sew a stretchy seam. This works nice for items you want to have a little stretch to, like cowls or hats. I am lacing up the top of the stitches. And I'm going under only one loop, not both loops. And pull through. Then go to the next side. In each case, I'm entering the stitch from underneath, then pushing the needle upwards. Pull through and do the other one. Now, in this case, I'm going under both loops to create a more solid seam. This is for blankets or handbags or slippers. You don't really want this seam to stretch very much, so going under both loops will help with that. As before, I'm going under and through. Then on the other side, going under and through. Continue this for the length of the seam. Then be sure to weave an end securely by piercing the yarn strands. You can see how the first several stitches create a stretchy seam. And the next several stitches are a more solid seam. Now I'll show you how to sew the rough edges of crochet together. I like to use longer safety pins to line up the rows and hold the pieces together. The best way to line up rows of rough edges is to turn them to the side. You can kind of see where the stitches line up better this way. You can see the little bumpy stitches on the end and match them up. Use your safety pin to secure the pieces together at this point. And then another safety pin a few inches away from the first one. Open up the work and place it flat on the table. I'm going to do this version of the mattress stitch again. Going back and forth from side to side, lacing up the work. With the rough edges of crochet, it's not always an exact science of where to put your needle. I like to pick up usually one or two strands of some part of the stitch along each edge. It might be a side of a stitch or the top of one or the bottom of one. Sometimes it's the turning chain. The safety pins will help you keep the rows straight so that you sew as evenly as possible. While I've been showing you invisible seam examples, sometimes you do want the seam to show. It's nice to use a contrasting color to sew granny squares together. This is called the whip stitch. You'll start on one corner with your new yarn, and I like to temporarily tie it until I'm ready to weave in the ends. With this stitch, on the one side, I'm entering from the top downward, 
and on the other side, I'm entering from the bottom upwards. It doesn't really matter which side goes in which direction as long as you stay in a consistent manner. Take out that temporary knot and use it to weave in the ends securely along the back. Now in this button example, I'm going to use my Susan Bates needle. With buttons, I like to use about 15 inches of yarn and leave just about 3 or 4 inches hanging in the back. Then I finish sewing my button, usually in a crisscross format. Once completed, I turn it over to its back and tie a knot. Then I tie another knot and maybe one more knot. I then take some clear nail polish and just add a little dot of it to the knot to secure it and help prevent it from coming unraveled. Let it dry first, then cut off the ends. And those are some of my tips and tricks for sewing with crochet.